One for the money, two for the better green, three, four. <laughs> What's up, if you're watching High Mind, the freshest show on the internet. My name is Riley Zosdorf, and my old rickety co-host, Graydon. <laughs> Today we're continuing our quest to find the, the best, best rap lyric, lyric of all time. time. If you didn't see the first episode, we asked our fans on Patreon and Discord to send us what they think is the best rap lyric of all time. Clever bars, bars that make us laugh, bars that make us think. Today we're gonna rank those submissions tier list style. Word up. All right, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more, hivemindtv.com for our merch. We also have a drop with copes that's linked in description. It's on the screen right now. Also in the description is a link for our Patreon or our Cameo if you'd like to support us, or click the join button and become a member on the channel. Get a knife next to your name, Name, emotes in the chat and extra content. Thank you to everyone who's done it. Like we just turned 21, let's get into these bars. Jay-Z from Diamonds from Sierra Leone Remix. <sighs> I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. <laughs> this is one like your parents know. Oh yeah. Like, they read this as a quote in Forbes. Yeah, my dad <laughs> will tell me this. I'm not a business man, I'm a business man. The emphasis on the S. <laughs> business man. Unbelievable. There's not even really much to say about this one. I mean, to break it down, he's not a business man. He's an entire business man. Yeah. <laughs> he is not conducting the business of others. He himself is a business. I'm not a business man. Like I'm not a guy in a suit yeah. or whatever. I'm the business. It's so hard. It's great. I mean, it's poetry. I didn't get this one till a few months ago either. No, really? <laughs> I was late to this one. I didn't understand it for a long time. Everybody always quoting it and here I am. It finally clicked. What? That, why would this take you any time? To, it's so obvious when he delivers it. Jeez, man. I, I don't mean it like that. It's just, you know. Yeah. Jeez, man. I just, I don't know. Something. I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. No. I'm, I'm happy I get you get it. it. I'm happy you get it. And yeah. it's awesome. I love it. Just like everyone else. Right. I'm just, a, yeah. I guess I just He's worry. He's a business. Yeah. I guess I just worry for like, <laughs> we're the two people doing this, ranking these bars. We are the two people ranking these bars. You and me. S. S. Next we've got from Joey's song, Sit and Pray. Yo, I'm trying to Oprah win-win with an L in my hand. Remotely passed off like the generous man. Let's hear Joey say it, and then we'll break it down. Okay. I'm trying to Oprah win-win with an L in my hand. Remotely passed off like the generous man. So the first obvious thing is Oprah Winfrey's name. Oprah win-win. With a L in my hand but also taking an L. And I feel like in my hand is also important, like you get dealt a bad hand. Correct. Joey was dealt some L's, but he's trying to Oprah win-win. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Which I think means also it's like to win at Oprah's level, being that she's a billionaire? Maybe a trillionaire. And also how she gives, but it also helps her by like giving stuff out to her audience. It's a win-win mm -hmm. for her mm -hmm. to be giving. Remotely passed off like the generous man. This this line is kind of confusing at the beginning because remotely passed off like the generous man. Immediately you think of like the joint right. being passed off to, I'm assuming his friends or his smoke buddies. Smoke buddies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then remotely also meaning like from a distance. So yeah. I think that kind of goes into the idea that when Joey wins, he'll remotely pass that success off to the people that he came up with, his friends, his family, the people he wants to support, the people who supported him at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Even though they might not be next to him in that moment, he's remotely passing off that wealth and success yep. to those people. The thing that I did not pick up on, but was pointed out to <laughs> both of us, is that Ellen, my uh -huh. hand, the generous man, Ellen DeGeneres. Incredible. And then remotely being like a TV remote and Ellen and Oprah being two different channels. Daytime kind of talk show lady hosts. Yeah, you can switch between them. I mean, that's just loaded with stuff right there. Part of me wants to go nerd emoji on this one. Kind of yeah. just like, you know, let me have touchers or this one. Like, let me really, you know, yeah. like there is a little bit of that, but at the same time, you have to respect it. Like that is a crazy pen game. I respect it. And I do not respect Ellen after what came out about her. What? That she was a monster. She was specific about her latte order. So what? She was a monster, Riley. Yeah. She wanted things done a certain way and she didn't want to deal with the rigmarole. I mean, I get it. Those assistants have PTSD. She didn't want people to look her in the eye. I get that. I mean, do they deserve to? I don't know. <sighs> She's the voice of Dory. Who else can say that? Literally no one, man. Yeah, I guess. This is a little too much for me, though. It's like if I watch Steph Curry make 25 threes in a row, I'm like, we get it, you're great. But I'm still like, that's perfect. It's like him making a backwards left-handed three. <laughs> I agree with that. You know, it's not just a normal jump shot. He's like... 
If there was a rap equivalent to the game of horse, yeah. nobody's beaten Joey Badass. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For the studious nature of this quintuple entendre, I'm going to give this an A because I think it loses a little bit in style points. Yeah. It's just a little nerdy. I go with a B here. Next, Lil Wayne, Lollipop. <laughs> Safe sex is great sex. Better wear a latex because you don't want that latex. That I think I'm latex. Unbelievable. Lil Wayne is the king of this segment. Like, Absolutely. We're never going to do an episode of this that does not have a Lil Wayne bar in it. We could do an episode with just Lil Wayne bars in it. Safe sex is great sex. Better wear a latex because you don't want that latex that I think I'm latex. <sighs> My brain works such a specific way too, where like when I hear the word latex, my gears start turning. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the I think I'm latex. Like without even thinking of this bar, it does the same thing. Yeah. And it does feel like super obvious. Exactly. And he is the king of that. Like it's almost like elementary, but he's the one who put it in the song. And did you see the interview where he, he doesn't even remember saying yeah. this? Yeah, that's classic. It's, I mean, that's classic Wayne. He yeah. doesn't remember much, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even know like what's going on in the world. No. If you ask him a question about somebody who's famous right now, he doesn't know who they are, and he's probably met him like 10 times. The only flaw I have with this, though, is the first line. Oh, come on. I mean, it's not great. I just don't bring your, you know. I mean, it's not great. Your personal opinions. Okay, it's great. I mean, you know, whatever. I think it's it's a good message to send to the kids. Yeah, it's, it's you, good, know. you know. I will I mean? agree with you there. Yeah. It's like, protect the troops or whatever, you know. But it says right after it, better wear a latex. You don't want that. Like, it's telling you why safe sex is great sex. That's true. Because even though it may be mediocre sex, kind of <laughs> barely even feels like sex at all, <laughs> it still is better in the long run. Because uh, no but, baby. Yeah, no baby. Babies are expensive, man. It's great because no baby was made. I've been taking the male birth control, though, and let me say... It's working. Are you sure it's working? I know. I guess not. Yeah, you haven't even had sex since you started taking it, right? No. But it hurts down there, so that's right. how you that's know. That's a good sign. Yeah, yeah it's a good a, sign. It's a good sign. Because I know what women go through, and it seems to hurt. It hurts, and it looks like a raisin. Well, didn't it always look a little bit like a raisin? A little bit. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving this an S. Easiest S of the day. Gonna be tough to beat. Next, we've got Tyler the Creator on Rusty. Popping like oil, Ollie, and fire flames. I'm harder than DJ Khaled playing the fucking quiet game. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this is one of my favorite Tyler songs of all time. Yeah. Popping like all your ollies and fire flames. I'm harder than DJ Khaled playing a fucking quiet game. Well, let's break it down. Popping like oil, ollie, and fire flames. So you pop an ollie. You do. But also oil when in fire ignites. It pops. It's kind of like almost a little bit word mashup vibes. It is, yeah. But it works. It has it like big style points. It's delivered yeah. so well. And then I'm harder than DJ Khaled playing the fucking quiet game. I love that bar so much. Because that's the quiet game for the person who would be most difficult for them to play it. <laughs> Correct. He's a loud man. And he loves the screen. And he loves the sound of his own voice. I also like the combination of like he's harder, like tough, harder right. with like something that is difficult to do. Yeah. Harder is the same word there, but they're like two different different things. Yeah, it's a little bridge. Yeah. I like that a lot. I also like that this predates any sort of tension between Tyler the Creator and DJ Khaled. Yeah. Who would end up beefing later on. Correct. Because DJ Khaled called his music mysterious and said nobody plays it outside at barber shops <laughs> and barbecues and whatever. That's true. Yeah, I mean, this is a very fun bar. I mm -hmm. like it a lot. I am, I'm going to give it a B. I'm going to go A on this. I like it. It's such a standout. Yes. Like, this is the bar you think of when you think of Rusty. You just think, yeah. harder than DJ Khaled playing the, the fucking, fucking quiet game. game. Next we've got from Baby Tron's Mike Amiri Monster. Let's go. Sliding in the Bumblebee, the op's gonna need an EpiPen. Burt, bah, bah. <laughs> Looking like a transformer when that supercharger hemi bend. I love this one. I don't think I fully get this one. I think I do. I think I can help you out. Sliding in the Bumblebee, the op's gonna need an EpiPen. Looking like a transformer when that supercharger hit me being. First off, the brr, pa, pa, is so <laughs> quiet. <Yeah. laughs> Sliding in the Bumblebee, the op's gonna need an EpiPen. Bumblebee is what car? Uh, I believe it's a yellow Camaro. And also, it might be a bit of a double here. I think like the Scat Pack or something has a Hornet on it. Or there's like a version of the Challenger that has a little Hornet on it. Isn't there a yellow car in Transformers too? That's Bumblebee. Oh. That's the Camaro. Oh, Bumblebee is the name of the Transformers car. Okay, okay. I'm getting there. The op's gonna need an EpiPen. Now, I get that part. Mm -hmm. I'm allergic to bees, and if I got stung by a bee, I would have to use an EpiPen, which is injecting epinephrine into my thigh, which basically fills you with adrenaline that fights off the allergic reaction for 15 to 20 minutes so you can get to a hospital to receive the proper treatment to save you from your anaphylactic shock. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> now, the op's needing an EpiPen I don't get. They get stung? Well, he's sliding in the bumblebee. The bee's coming for them. Right, okay. You're gonna need an EpiPen because 
he's going to hit you. He's going to sting you. Yeah, I get that, I guess. It's just like an EpiPen wouldn't help a person who's been shot. I think the adrenaline would probably help someone who's bleeding out from a gunshot wound. You think so? I don't want to have a medical debate with you right now. Last time we got into one, it ended ugly. All right, well, we can just have my doctor fight your doctor again if we want. That's fine. Uh, looking like a transformer with that supercharger Hemi bend. Explain that to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I believe the supercharger Hemi, that's the engine. He's going real fast. I think that's implying that he's going so fast <laughs> that the engine is... Bending. Does that happen? Oh, yeah, if you really hammer it. The engine bends? Yeah, and it's, so it's looking like a transformer because the car is changing from what it looks like stationary. He's hitting the engine so hard that the car is bending. He's literally transforming because he's going so fast towards the ops. Transformer, Bumblebee, connected, EpiPen. I mean, yeah, you know, it hits all the marks for me. It's perfect, and it's just like signature Tron. He's another one. We could do a whole video of just baby Tron bars breaking Absolutely. those down. So this one doesn't stick out to me the same way. I'm sure it does to people who like cars. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this a... C plus. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna put the plus next to it. It's a C, but I want you guys to know that it's I don't. It's close to a B. Yeah, I think it's quite good. I'll give it that B for Bumblebee and bra bra. Next, we've got from MF Doom's All Out of Ale. One for the money, two for the better green, three for. <sighs> Methylenedioxymethamphetamine. <laughs> Methylenedioxymethamphetamine. Nice. And that's MDMA. Molly. <laughs> One for the money, two for the better green, three, four, methylene, dioxymethamphetamine. Is that the biggest word ever used in a rap song? Ooh, that'd be an interesting thing to find out. <laughs> oh, it's probably, sadly, it's going to be supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. People do that all the time. They do? Yes. Is that a real word, though? Yeah, I think they added it to Webster's. And I'm pretty sure it's like a YouTuber, rapper, sort of, or like people who like want to be like Eminem will be like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, blah, 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 blah. It's all stupid, but. It's one for the money. One is for the money. Two is for the better green. That would mean, mean like better weed? Potentially, but money is all also green. Right. So I'm going to hold on to that as maybe a clue. Is there better money? That's what I don't know. Blue bills. Three, four long Molly word. Maybe like just one for the money. Two times for the weed. I love the weed more than money. And three and four for the Molly. He maybe really loves the Molly. So upon further research, we've gained new intel uh -huh. on what this all means. It is obviously a play on one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready and four to go. Mm -hmm. That's a nursery rhyme. Little yeah. kids, little kids playground jam. Two for the better green. We were right. That's for, that's for weed. But then it does this internal rhyming thing where better green rhymes with methylene and amphetamine, but money rhymes with the oxy part in the middle. Yeah. And then three, four, that whole long word is the scientific name for MDMA. So it's three, four MDMA is Molly. So it's like playing on this scientific name for that drug. Yeah. Now, I don't know time signatures. Is this song in three, four? Oh, God. Because that, be, <laughs> that would be like different levels. I think it's only fair that I also take off some nerd points for this one and give this an A. Yeah, I'm with this as an A. Any big, like, real scientific word, not here for it. Yeah, it's like a joke you have to explain. You have to literally look up stuff to figure out why this is so smart, which yeah. is, there's a beauty to that, but at the same time, you like a joke that just hits sometimes. Yeah. R.I.P. Doom. Now we got <laughs> Nicki Minaj on Gotta Go Hard. <laughs> Bitches is softer than al dente, cut from a different kente. Tell them I'm the the ninja, Wheezy is my sensei. I got some problems with this one, but let's hear it first. Bitches is softer than al dente, cut from a different kente. Tell them I'm the ninja, Wheezy is my sensei. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with bitches is softer than al dente. Al dente being for pasta. Yeah, but this is where my problem is. Al dente is like when it still has a little firmness to it. Yeah, but it's, it's, bitches is softer than al dente. They have no ah, firmness, so they're ah, softer than I al love dente. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you. For people who don't don't know, you use the phrase al dente for the perfect pasta texture. Yeah. So you kind of like pull out one little piece of pasta and throw it at the wall. And if it sticks, that means it's al dente. Oh, I thought it was if it put a little dent in your drywall. No, that's different. That's <laughs> al dente. Oh, okay. <laughs> al dente. <laughs> Cut from a different kente, meaning cloth from Ghana. Yes. Like a specific type of cloth. Mm. And then tell them I'm the ninja. Wheezy is my sensei. That's my favorite bar. Yeah, it's the most memorable. I yeah. remember that line without the two before it. Yeah. I mean, it's classic Nikki stuff. I hate the delivery of this bar. One of the worst things I've ever heard. Like, it's like <laughs> reading it, there's so many ways I can imagine Nicki Minaj delivering this where it's going to be amazing and it's yes. going to be like hard hitting. And then it's just the auto tune. Some of like, even the pacing of it feels a little bit weird. Yeah, it's awkward in yeah. general. It loses a lot of style points for me with that. 
that. But I love the idea of Wheezy as a sensei. So this is gonna keep this above a C for me. I'm gonna put this at a B. Representation from Italy, Ghana, and Japan here too. That is special. That's kind of cool. That's yeah, world traveling. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a C. I'm gonna bring it down to, to a D. A D? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. you skipped right over me. Now for these next two, Graydon and I have selected bars that we love and we're showing them to each other. So you're gonna rank the one that I show you and then I'm gonna rank the one that you show me. F. You haven't even seen it yet. Okay, I'll give it a shot. First, we've got mine from Pusha T's Brambleton. Black Rari White Hood make it a race thing. Come on. Come, let, come on. Let's hear Pusha T say it. Black Rari White Hood make it a race thing. I mean, that is just, it's so short. It's literally one bar. One bar. I don't know how many entendres. It's a black Rari with a white hood. Make it a race thing. So that means like customizing vehicles. Correct. And also the checkered flag at the end of a race is black and white. I didn't even think about that. Oh God, wow, I didn't even think of that. That is hitting me right now, that's crazy. Black and white, yeah, the race thing. Oh my God, and then you got obviously black and white, mm -hmm. a race thing. Yeah. But then white hood, KKK. Yeah, that's crazy. That's an easy yes, man. I mean. Yeah. Mine is not nearly as heady. I just want to warn you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's just one of my favorites. Before we exit the Pusha T section, I want to say in the first episode of this, we missed a few things in the Pusha T bar we talked about there, and you guys commented it a lot. So I picked a Pusha T bar on purpose yeah. to kind of repent for our sins. You nice. Know? We missed headlines and cosigns, headlines being a Drake song. Hey. And it was obviously like a subtle Drake dig, and we just didn't pick up on it. But. Some things are going to go over our heads. We're not perfect. That's true. Let's get into yours. Come on. Here we have Big Boy in the first verse on So Fresh, So Clean. Teddy Pender grass cooler than Freddie Jackson sipping a milkshake in a snowstorm. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Let's hear big boy say it. Teddy Pendergrass cooler than Freddie Jackson sipping a milkshake in a snowstorm. That song wow. is so cool. I love that song. <laughs> okay, so explain this to me. It's really not much explaining to do. You just have two cool old soul singers, Teddy Pendergrass and Freddie Jackson. Yeah. Big boy's acknowledging that they're cool, but he's saying he's cooler. So much cooler than even if they were sipping a milkshake in a snowstorm, <laughs> he remains cooler. <laughs> yeah. This is like some Dr. Seuss type shit <laughs> in a certain way. You know, it's like cooler than a snowman and an avalanche. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of like, all right. Like, it's like some old saying somebody will say. Also, why is Outkast so obsessed with what's cool? Like, what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold? Yeah, like, they're always true. talking about what's cool yeah. and yeah. using a lot of those metaphors. I, hey, I mean, it's Trust me, <laughs> it's know. smooth. It's I smooth. like it, but there's nothing really. <laughs> it's like, and this verse starts with gator belts and patty melts and Monte Carlos. Oh yeah, <laughs> just a crazy verse. Gator belts and, and patty, patty melts and, and Monte, Monte Carlos. Carlos. Just by Outcast standards, I gotta give it like a C. That's fair because there's so many great Andre and Big Boys yes. bars out there. This is great and it's smooth <laughs> and I like it. I don't want that to be like a dig at it at all. It's just not like super impressive. Right. One of my all-time favorites. I always picture Freddie Jackson freezing his ass off, drinking a milkshake, and Big Boy in the fur coat. Yeah. Just kind of walking by and being like, Back into the ones that you guys sent in. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to be American idols. My X factor is I'm the only one with the voice. <laughs> I was Vic Mensa. Vic Mensa shades of blue. Can't do this game without Vic Mensa. <laughs> I was gonna say the exact yeah. same thing, buddy. <laughs> Everybody trying to be American idols. My X factor is that I'm the only one with the voice. Beautiful oh. gospel <laughs> sample. I, I, mean, was, this, I was really hoping it wasn't gonna be this type of song. This one makes a lot of sense to me. That checks out. Let's start at the top. <laughs> Everybody trying to be American Idols. Sure. Very famous TV show. Yes, but also people are trying to be American Idols, live the American dream, be a role model, be a uh, per, you know, an icon. You know, a whatever. teat sucker to the capitalist system. I think more so it's you know, people are trying to be famous. I think that's generally what the line means. Right, they're stuck in the game. My X Factor. <laughs> Which is another TV show. A very successful TV show. Almost like, you know, a descendant of American Idol. Is I'm the only one with The Voice. Another TV show. Yeah, NBC's The Voice. Yet another descendant of American Idols. <laughs> okay, yeah. Three talent competition TV Bang. shows named and strung together weekly. Yes. <laughs> with a sweet gospel sample to set the tone that really lets you know that Vic does have that voice. He is the one. He is the voice of the people. Everyone else is trying to be American Idols, but he has the voice, and that voice is his X Factor. <laughs> this is like someone who thinks they're a genius 
oh, like, <laughs> this is an F. This is so, ugh. I just hate somebody with the, the, this level of confidence delivering yeah. such weakly <laughs> strung together bars. Ah, it's not an F though, because I love each of those TV shows. Okay. It's a D. Shout out Simon Cowell. Blade from The Nine Is Up. Fear of death and stress causes stress and fear of death. <laughs> I'm gonna let you ponder that. I'm digesting. Let's hear Blade say it. Fear of death and stress. Most of stress and fear of death. I mean, I absolutely love this song. The Night mm -hmm. Is Up is crazy. And I mean, yeah, for as simple as, as this is, I do think it's rather poetic. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a little <laughs> in awe of it. Yeah, fear of death and stress causes stress and fear of death. It's the vicious cycle of when you're stressed and you're scared of dying. You'll shorten your lifespan. You'll shorten your lifespan by continuing that cycle of stress. It, they, like the fear of death and the stress both increase the more you they are present in your life. Yeah, that's true. Because you're gonna be more scared of dying if you're more stressed. Like your blood pressure, yep. like all of that. It is amazing what the mind does, you know? Same thing with age. You know, the more you like think you're old, the more likely you are to have like the symptoms of being old. Totally. Which is crazy. Yeah, if you think all the time, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting old. You're going to blow your own back out. And you're going to have wrinkles, crow's yep. feet. Bad breath. Receding hairline. Dick don't work. Saggy tits. <laughs> Saggy tits. <laughs> Flappy triceps. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're at Golden Corral at 4 p.m. for dinner. And you're excited to get home, sit in a rocking chair, and knit something while you watch your stories. I'm staying young up here, I'll tell you what. For as simple as it is, I mean, I think it's great. It's a thought-provoking bar. I love it. I'm going to give this a B. I go A with it. Really? Yeah, I love this. Wow. I think this is something we all need to think about a little more. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Blade. Next, Kendrick Lamar on Mad City. This is not a rap on how I'm slinging crack or move cocaine. This is cul-de-sac and plenty cognac and major pain. Not the drill, Sergeant, but the stress that weigh in on your brain. This is cul-de-sac and plenty cognac and major pain. Not the drill, Sergeant, but the stress that weigh in on your brain. Iconic. In the first line, he's basically saying, Good Kid, Mad City is not a story about drug dealing. He's right. not going to be talking about drug dealing on this album. Mm -hmm. And the second line is saying it's more about his good kid upbringing. So a cul-de-sac representative of that, yeah. like generally has Burbs. the connotation of, yeah, a wealthier upbringing. Mm -hmm. Plenty cognac. Alcoholism like, maybe was present in his upbringing. And major pain. Mm -hmm. So that meaning like the actual pain that troubles him that he talks a lot about on this album, but also the TV show from the 90s. Yes, with Damon Wayans. Yes. And then the next line being not the drill sergeant, because that's the character Damon Wayans plays in Major Pain. Yes. <laughs> but the stress that weigh in on your brain. Wayans. So weigh in. Unbelievable. Damon Wayans. So that's, yeah, that's crazy. In that line, he's basically saying like, I'm not talking about Major Pain, the TV show, lighthearted, yeah. fun thing. I'm talking about the stuff I'm actually going through. That's what you're going to be hearing. Yeah, that real shit. I think it's great. It's the flow for me. That's so good here. Yeah. It's just iconic, like delivery. Yeah, I mean, this song is like some of the best delivery in rap of the last 15 years. Yeah. It's an A, it's not an S though. It's yeah. not like loaded enough. Yeah, I agree. Next we got, yeah, we gotta have Childish Gambino here. You do. They will not forget me like I was hit by planes. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Let's hear him say it, but I'm gonna break this one down for you. <laughs> They will not forget me like I was hit by planes. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, um, I have a question. Go ahead, shoot. Like, are we remembering the towers? You yeah. know what I mean? The day is the thing you don't forget. Well, I not think it's a tragedy towers. any time something or someone gets hit by planes. <laughs> and so if he were to be hit right. by four planes, which were <laughs> was the number of planes that went down that day, even though the fourth one only hit a field, there were lives lost on that plane. So if Childish Gambino was hit by four jumbo jets, <laughs> it would be a tragedy. And we would never, never, Forget that. I know, but this is a 9-11 reference directly to the idea that people say never forget. Correct. About that day. It's not just any time anything gets hit by planes. What would you like him to say for this to make sense? Nothing. Uh oh No 9-11 reference? Just nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> that would make more sense to you? TV show. I do the TV show? Yeah, Atlanta, I think is good. Frankly, I think what you're saying is a little un-American. How? I'm just... Have you forgotten? <laughs> no, I haven't forgotten, obviously. I'm the one trying to point back to the reference that is 9-11, never forget. Like, this is... It's just stupid. But I love 9-11. It's one of my favorite holidays. <laughs> it is always a great time barbecuing with the family and remembering all those souls lost. God rest them. For that reason, for his patriotism and, frankly, courage <laughs> to write something like this, <laughs> yeah. I give him an F. And we're trading spaces here. I'm going to give this a D because I do think it's 
funny how stupid it is. And if he's in on that. <laughs> of course he is. A little bit, like just, they will not forget me like I was hit by planes. Like if I said that to you as like an idea for a oh. bar for a queef jerky song. I'd be cackling. You'd think that was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So, C. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping up. Last one from BLP Kosher's Inferno 2. And I was riding with a tech. The Glock came with a large attachment. Real Files PDF. So first of all, BLP Kosher is a Jewish rapper from Florida mm -hmm. who is coming up in the underground right now and someone who's introduced to us on our streams and we've become very fond of. We've Absolutely. We've been playing a bunch of his music around our office. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I was riding with a tech. That's a gun. A little machine gun. <laughs> the Glock came with a large attachment. Maybe a scope, maybe an extendo clip, maybe a laser, a big laser. Maybe even the barrel drum. And then real files, PDF. I guess I don't really know what files means. Like, is there something? Yeah, that's there, kind of what there, I'm... Is there a file you can attach to a gun? Oh, sometimes you file down like the serial number so they can't trace the gun. Oh, if it's a reference to that, then that's like, this is like next level. Or you'll file down the firing pin to make it automatic. And then PDF, which is a real file, but also <laughs> a large attachment to an email. Often a PDF will be too big, but you'll have to make it a Google Drive link or something. Yeah, it's like nerdy in a way that's like not, the bar's not nerdy, but he's acknowledging that he knows like when a file's too large, it has, you know. Yeah, large <laughs> attachment, yeah. It's, just, but that's just like everyday shit, everybody knows that. Right, right? but it's right. like for such a like a street rapper yeah. to be like, oh, well, the file's a little too big. <laughs> make it a Google Drive. Yeah. Like, it's just funny. It has like a little bit of a wane thing to it in yeah. that it's like punchline rap. Exactly. It's like real files, PDF. Not yeah. like Glock came with a large attachment like it was a PDF. Right. You're not like doing all that. You're just doing punchline rap, mm -hmm. hashtag rap. You know what? I see like a similar trajectory for BLP as like Babytron, honestly. Yeah. With yeah. the way he raps and just like way he looks too. And also in a time where obviously there's been a lot of anti-Semitic slander. Yeah. And discourse about that. It's yeah. good to have some Jewish representation. Absolutely. In rap. Not to say that there isn't Jewish representation in rap right now, but this is someone who very much wears their Jewish identity mm -hmm. proudly. Yeah. I think that's really cool that he's doing that. It's and awesome. it's cool to see him pop out. He's got a very interesting style to him. Yeah. A um, creative flow. Super catchy. That's the coolest thing about it. <laughs> so yeah. catchy. What are you giving this one? Um, I'm going to give it a B. I think it's great, but I just don't think it like blew my mind or anything. I agree. Yeah. B. I think he has better bars. That, that, that was another day on our quest <laughs> to find the best rap lyric of all time. If you've got some clever rap lyrics you want to see show up in here, join our Discord or join our Patreon. Send them over. There's a Discord channel for it. Or just comment them down below. Sure. We'll be sifting through there. We'll check them out. Other than that, make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. All that stuff I said at the beginning. And Graydon, would you like to leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave or live their lives by? There's no no shame in repeating a good thing. All right, this has been High Mind TV. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. I feel like Dwayne The Rock, Johnson and Johnson shots. Because I also hate Oprah. Why don't you like Oprah? She rubbed me the wrong way. Like in general or? In public one time. Like physically rubbed you? No. Oh, okay. Like emotionally. Oh, geez, what's the deal? She tried to pick up a tab for me and I said, no, really, it's fine, I got it. She said, please, I'm Oprah, let everyone get to, and I was like, come on. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. just kind of like, it was too much.